It's Queer Car Talk time, episode 29, Mikoku speaking. And today we are going to talk about where to start when you want to get better at painting. Often when we tackle that subject matter, we see people starting to paint, they come into a mental blockade because we tend to start with topics that are very, very hard. It is my intention today to cover a little bit of points here that might aid you and help you with, you know, getting better with painting. First and foremost, I would like to say that it is our intention to provide here certain pointers in a brief and simple way, but please keep in mind that these quick art talk times and any YouTube videos that we upload are separate from our advanced teachings at Focal Point School. It is of course our desire to stay active in the community and to cover here some snippets of what we do in class. However, we have limited time here and yeah, we just, uh, we would like to here still cover certain things that might aid you in your own concept art and or illustration journey. So without further ado, let's start. This is a recording from the advanced digital painting class, which I co-run with Darek Zabrotsky. It is a live demo recorded somewhere in December 2019. So yeah, this is quite old. I dug it up, but I still found that it might be still of use for, for you guys, right? So let's go over through some points where to start with painting and you know how to tackle the subject matter in a nice way so you can get better faster. Point number one, pick an unusual, uh, sorry, pick an unusual topic. I will not edit it out anyway. So unusual topics are something that I would say is pretty important because like I said, often when I see people starting out, they come into this mental blockade and the mistakes will be more visible when we pick topics that we see often from, you know, experienced artists, right? You might scroll Instagram or any social media or art station. You might see a lot of faces, characters, beautiful landscapes. And of course, when I was starting out, I had the same. I wanted to dive into these kinds of topics immediately because, well, by nature, we want to output the same and to get to our end result as fast as possible. However, being a good painter, you have to understand materials, shape language, how materials re react on light, how light works on its own. That's why starting off with a humble and easy to understand topic which is also unusual and disconnected from everyday life will help you to achieve a better result. Now insects are maybe part of our everyday life especially mosquitoes in the summer however we don't view them on a scale like for example a car or a human face therefore we kind of disregard them as little dots little you know we, we, we don't pay that much attention to them. Therefore, even if you make mistakes, like I inevitably am doing here, like I have some mistakes in the proportions, maybe some mistakes in the colors, I am able to still get away with it and it still will be acceptable for the general audience because this topic is very much, you know, disconnected from our everyday life. Human faces or even objects that are in our life on a daily basis, well, that tolerance level of mistakes then becomes incrementally higher. That's why faces are very hard to paint. Also, from an evolutionary standpoint, we are very much able to assess emotion and mental states based on someone's face. So is, if there is a little bit of a slight mistake in a face going on, a little bit of asymmetry, a little bit of you know crooked shape something that doesn't work right then we will be able to spot it easier than for example a lightning mistake or a render mistake on a mosquito like this and i might go deeper into that topic but again we are here with a little bit of limited time and i want to cover as much points as possible in a brief way so i hope it makes sense pick a topic that is disconnected from everyday life and you'll be able to achieve way more. You will get less frustrated, you'll be more relaxed. And also that was the case here. I was pretty relaxed doing this demo even though it was live in front of a class, right? All right, let's go to point number two. 
pick a subject which you will enjoy. I think that goes without saying for me, for my personal case, I enjoy almost all subjects because I am able to connect almost every single object to my everyday life. When I see, for example, an insect like this, a mosquito, I am embracing the design, dissecting it, analyzing it, and I am looking for ways how I would be able to utilize it in my concept design journey. So, for example, if I'll be making a sci-fi starfighter, perhaps I would be able to somehow utilize the emotional design language and shape form factor from this mosquito and somehow infuse that into my custom design. Now in the background you see like this huge beetle that is being carried on some hands. I uh, also made a study of that and that carries also a different design language which I might end up using for my own designs later. So you can see that studies like this again activate your thinking designer's brain which in our opinion at school is, uh, is very important and again something that we dive in deeper in a much more advanced way right you are learning in a multifaceted way so on purpose i pick a topic where i want to be challenged from multiple angles but of course not be over challenged so again if i would pick you know a, a portrait of a face it would be much harder yet on a fundamental level i would be still challenged with the same things and these are the following material definition very important whatever you paint you have to be able to depict that material in the most believable and rich way possible now this is maybe not the most detailed and most refined painting that you will see However, because I'm abiding to the fundamentals and thinking and immersing myself into the material definition, I am able to get away with a little bit of work, efficient work, while being able to showcase each and every material. And when you think about it, this mosquito is consisting from multiple materials. Its midsection has this kind of furry, hairy material going on with a little bit of gloss underneath. Then you have the rear area, kind of like its uh, butt. I really forgot the name, the exact official name for it. But you know, that blood sack, right? Where he's collecting the blood, or rather she, because it's the females that are collecting the blood. Here is another way, research your topic before you start painting, right? So that might be another side point. So the wings have their own materials, the sup, uh, the, the midsection has its own furry material and then that blood sack on the back has its own material with its own specific material features. You can see some subsurface scattering going on. You can see like how the blood is kind of like almost glowing because it's uh, it just drank its blood. So you can see like how that how it illuminates when the light is piercing through it. Then the wings are having this kind of sub transparent glossy satin material going on and I'm also depicting that with a little bit of a mixer brush right so I'm not using any filters I'm really trying to paint everything while thinking about the materials and and then of course you know you can see how I defined the furry the furry material a little bit in, it, in its mix section then of course the legs the legs are as you can see very hard to catch even on this macro camera because they're so thin and tiny and all in all because i am differentiating these materials in a nice way it takes shape in a rather effective way notice also how i'm exaggerating certain aspects here right that's another topic that we dive into very deeply that every painter every painting and every painter actually is reinterpreting reality Brush efficiency comes also into play here, right? Again, I'm not detailing this piece too much. However, I am able to abide and adhere to what I know about light and materials. Therefore, I am able to use a limited amount of brush strokes with brush efficiency to get away with my shape. You want to know more about brush effic efficiency, please go and watch episode 25, a special 
where we specifically focus on brush efficiency. Next thing that I would like to cover briefly is consistency. When we often review portfolios, people, because this is something that we always recommend upcoming students, if they want to sign up for any workshop or one of our core classes, we always recommend sending in your current portfolio or work samples so that we can help you out the best what to pick, what classes to pick. Uh, Basically, the, different, the main difference is between the intro classes and the advanced classes. What we often see is random works, right? We see like oh, one anime character, uh, one spaceship, and then one castle out of nowhere, right? What we would like to see is the ability to have consistency in your work. So pick a topic, for example, insects, and make 5 to 10 to 15 studies. You will see that you will get incrementally better which with each and every one you're learning yourself on a conscious and unconscious level how to abide to a certain certain set topic with its limitations and provide multiple outcomes this is a very underrated and important skill for every concept artist and illustrator because as an illustrator you will have to enrich concepts that are have been pre-designed by someone else or designed by you and then you end up illustrating them yourself right and make series out of it so this is again not limited to just painting insects but i believe that if you make series of any topic it will show that you are you're showing patience to a potential client you're showing that you are able to abide to a certain style i i cannot just I can go on and on on how many things you are showing and what kind of qualities you are showcasing when you're able to consistently give a series of works, a series of designs which are belonging to one genre. And of course, I guess by now you guessed it, that with this exercise, you inevitably train your fundamental skills. Insects are very fascinating. We tend to disregard them. Now that it is summer here, I really can say that this is something that I also neglected because I see now insects popping up everywhere. And when I now will hear people saying or upcoming artists, oh, I don't know what to paint. I will just tell them, just take a walk outside. And the topics, sometimes they just land on you, literally. A mosquito will land on you if you walk through the forest. Maybe it will be a butterfly. Maybe a wasp will come zipping through. But you will inevitably encounter something that will be worthwhile analyzing and adding to your visual library. I'll let this one finish itself. I hope it was, uh, again, a nice, you know, a nice video that might have aided you in your journey of becoming a better concept artist. If you find this useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It is very important for us that you do that so that we can keep on providing a little bit of insights like this. And other than that, I would like you to thank you for watching and bye bye.